JM7 Music, JMO God. In this video, I will show you how I made my subtractive synthesizer. There will be two parts of this, sorry, three parts of this. First, I will show the development of the subtractive synthesizer. The second part will be the sequencer. And the third and final part will be the reverb. Okay, so here we go. Let's first start by adding two, two sawtooth waves around 300 hertz here's a two saw tooth oscillators next we add a plus plus tilde for clarity now it's a bit loud at the moment so we add a multiplier multiply tilde 0 0.1 to get a quieter sound to get a quieter signal now phases start at 0 and they go to 1 it fails to have a value of 0 DC offset so we use a 0 minus 0 minus tilde 0 0.5 on each phaser so on each side so we so we can center it around zero do the same for the other side minus tilde 0 0.5 connect 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 output the prettiest output in the deck should get some Symbols. Let's, let's, space. let's connect that. Object filter. Okay, sounds good, but it's too bright. So let's add a filter to remove some harmonics. Band pass. Let's use band pass. And let's let 660 hertz go through. Okay, we can make this, and it should sound. Let's bright. Yeah. Voila. Done. There we go. Now, now let's control the cutoff frequency of this filter and let's make a volume control for the final signal. So we create two sliders. Bam. Bam. Right click it, properties. Let's name this filter frequency, shall we? And let's give it a value of zero and so hundred to two thousand. Color it orange. And this one, second one, will be from zero to zero point okay, five for this amp. And so that the final signal signal is no longer fixed at 0 0.1, we 0 0.1 or 0 0.3 as we have it here. We will use this to control the amplitude. Connect that to the second inlet of the band pass filter. Connect this to the right inlet, and it should change. Perfect. Now, instead of using the sliders so the filter frequency changes, we will attach the bandpass filter to an automatically moving signal. So the filter frequency is temporarily disconnected. Sayonara. Filter frequency. And we are using the line generator instead. So, a line object. How the hell to get the line object? And this line object, a line object takes a target and directs it to another target over the time given. 
We make an envelope generator by adding a line, this object, and create messages. So that's an object. Create two messages. One for attack. And on the other for the K. Let's put seven five. Okay. As you connect the attack. Connect this and this is the now in, and in the message box, this is the destination value, time, destination value, and time in milliseconds. And let's create a multiply as well, 2000, to get it to the audible range, audible range, plus. Hundred, and we connect this to there, and it should play. Bang. Decay. Yes. Perfect. Sounds good. Now we will set two messages in sequence that will set the line in motion by itself to rise up to the top in a time set by an attack slider and the K fader which takes it back down to zero. So what we're gonna do is delete these add two sliders R do and name it attack. Yep, zero to two thousand Let's color it yellow. This will be the K zero to two thousand as well, and color me lavender. Yep, and oh, number box, so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, now next we construct larger messages by substituting the attack and decay message, the ones we just deleted, by with an S dollar dollar one notation. So zero one that will be for the decay. And the other one for the attack. Connect this to the line. Yep. Now we use float boxes to store values or temporary numbers. So different boxes and connect this to message boxes. Let's also add um we need some sort of trigger. So let's create a bang. We need that T B B Trigger bang bang, and shut you down. And now, when the bang is clicked, any value that was stored on the right inlet is will be outputted. Okay, so let me just go a thousand. Just follow me. You shall understand later. Connect okay, the this one. and 
the attack, the float box, done, and the delay. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? It really doesn't. So we use a bank to start the envelope generator. And the first message to fire off the attack slider. Yeah, and the first message fires off the attack slider. Uh, the trick to keep the decay playing after the attack is to add is to make a delay object, which is this one. And this delays anything, and this delays any bangs appearing on its left inlet. So anything here will be delayed. So it reads from right to left. So it goes bam, bam, that plays first, bam, and then it's this one. Capiche? So it should play. Yep, no decay. Huge amount of decay. Wonderful, isn't it? We now have a working envelope generator. Yes. So, it's a bit chaotic at the moment. So, what we do now is make a sub patch, PD, envelope, bam, should open up. What the? Here we go. Bam, this is our sub patch. What we need to do now is copy the components of the envelope. So this cut. We now paste it in, the, in our sub patch. Yes. Sub patch. Here we go. And we change we edit modify our float boxes and type in fifty on each side and this is so that the attack and decay can start at a sensible value okay and values from the values from the attack inlet are sent to the delay okay let me just let me add it first all right first oh. Attack and we need an output outlet. Connect it up. Yep. What we do here is add a TFF. We connect this. TFF and this. Pretty much the same thing. to the float and oops it's getting messy again now the values from the attack inlet are sent to the delay there you go using a TFF tr trigger which output its input from right to left Basically, it reads from right to left, just as I said before, and and it, and first activates the float boxes. Have it. And so our synth can read the sub patch. We need to add an inlet object, inlet trigger, an inlet decay, an inlet attack, so we can read what yeah what we want it to read. And this, yeah, this basically sends control messages. You can make this up to the connect the inlet decay to the F50.
and it should but no it should still play we connect our pure C daisy connect our pure data connect this to there now let's add more to this like 4000 um, and connect the attack decay and it should play two issues the control the, the the controls for attack decay only work when the bang is clicked right? the switches to the default parameters set in the float boxes and messages until you touch the control system again so let's create another sub patch PD uh, call it fast fat oscillator Yes. Then copy these. Okay, yeah, copy these components. Cut. Open up the new sub patch. Paste. This one's a bit more complicated. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Let's add our two V sliders. One, two. Let's call this one maybe some pitch. And a value of twenty two two. 400 400 yes whoa whoa let's color this in blue call this fatness uh, 0 to 1 value of 0 to 1 and color this green let's color it green shall we uh, You guys, so you guys can tell what I'm gonna do. Okay. So let's open up the sub patch. Now I'll create an inlet pitch inlet fatness. Outlet as well. Let's turn my faces a bit down to around 70. 70. 70, yeah. Right. Give it some space. Ooh, pardon me. Right. No. For, yeah. 440 hertz is generally what the pitch inlet is set to because the oscillator is measured in units. Now, uh, and the separation of the Two sort of the sawtooth waves is called the fatness. This is the fatness. This is what creates the slow moving patterns. And assuming we start from a range of zero to one, we multiply, add a multiplier, there we go, a multiplier of five. Connect them up and just add five so it so to get it in the more audible range, audible range, and we take five from one oscillator, so object box and object box minus, and the 
B F F Now we add five and take away add five on one side and take away five on the other because the gap between zero and ten hertz of fatness is a lot. It's plenty of fatness. It leaves a leaves too much of a gap. It's too much. You will hear it after. And we use the trigger object to update the changes of the fatness done with the control slider and the V slider. Yeah, control side of each side, okay. Remember the trigger reads from right to left, so the flow. So guys, so the flow, there we go. So wait, let's connect this up. Oh, forgot another B. Add another B. Yeah. Guys, if you don't understand what any of these objects means, just simply right click it, hit properties, I'm oh, sorry, hit help, and it will explain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the Skyrim thing. Anyway, connect this up. Easy. And don't forget the pitch. Otherwise, it won't play. Probably. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Everything looks good. And right now, Yeah, so remember that the trigger reads from right to left so that the flow is read first and banged later. FF flow is read first and then banged later. Then the float part to the float part to yeah, so the float part to the right hand inlets and then sending bangs to the leftmost inlets of the subtraction and addition objects. Now have our now we simply connect it. Let's add a number plate as well over here. Nearly finished guys, nearly finished. Connect it up. Now ooh, can you hear that? No. I'm going to be extra and add a high pass filter. Hip safety just to remove the low wanted the low sounds, you know, the low frequencies. Okay and yeah. Look at that fatness. Oh my dude. So fat. Bring it up. <laughs> See, there's the fans. That's too much. Okay, let's turn on the pitch. Uh, hey, I put this on you. Nice, sweet. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. And here we finished. Here is my subjective synthesizer. Now you don't have to do this, but I want I would like to connect it to a sequencer. A sequencer which I previously made. Yeah, before the subtractive synthesizer was made. So what we do here is MTOF connect it up to the bank. Loves to do that. No, I said connect the MTOF. Oh, sorry, connect the MTOF to pitch. 
yes and the number plate number box yeah number plate number box to the bang you shut you down Turn it on. Woo. Nice. Nice. And over here, I made a Vivo. So let's connect some Vivo. There's a wet signal and the wrong size. Yep, and this is my subtractive synthesizer. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm about to get drunk now. Darling, pass me the sake, please.